All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now today, back inside the studio, buckets of paint, a new subject, it's gonna be great fun. Cannot wait, let's get into it. Get the paint on. All right, now we're using these great tins of paint again so we can throw buckets of it around without causing too many dramas, without running out of paint. Got some ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue there. Now I'm going to go for a bit of burnt sienna. Beautiful colour. Rich and lovely. Look at that stuff. Just look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Right. Bung plenty on there. And what I'll do is, is I won't be stingy on the paint, but if I find I've got too much out by the end, just grab all the stuff that hasn't been messed around with, all the clean stuff, bung it back in here, knock the lid back on, Give it a few taps down like that and it levels it. This is good as gold. All right, so now we're gonna need some yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, a few other simple colors, and we'll get started right. Let's do it. All right, yellow ochre, another fantastic color. Let's get stuck into that one. How much am I gonna need? That might be enough for this painting, depending on what the actual subject is, as to how much, obviously, you're gonna get out, so. Today, I think there's going to be about that much. All right. Fantastic. All right, now these, the last one were 500 mil tins. This one's the one litre tin. One litre. You can see, it's just tons of paint. So there's no worries about being too stingy on paint. There was just so much paint to throw around. That. Fantastic, right. Oh, what fun it is to get the spatula out, the palette knife, whatever you want to call it, and just play with heaps of paint. Okay. All right, so we've got a few colors up. Now, I might just, let's have a look. Uh, I might just establish right now, before we go any further, what I'm gonna do here. Let's just put a bit of light on there. I'm painting, painting on a Belgian linen again, and it's got some clear coat, clear primer, so it's all protected and sealed, so the paint can't soak in. But at the same time, there we go, just put that in. At the same time, I've still got that beautiful raw colour, so it looks like it's unprimed. I love that Belgian linen, that raw look. All right, so let's just put a bit of that in. What do we got? Right, stand back and have a look what do we got. All right, that's all well and good now. I'll go with the biggest differences. I've just established a bit of a highlight there, obviously, and now we'll get stuck into trying to get the painting to look like how I want as quickly as possible. So I'll just remove some of that white off there. So I'm gonna go for darks. So we go the Burnt Sienna. Ultramarine blue will create a nice dark because they're the opposite of the color wheel. You've got blue on one side. Burnt Sienna is really a type of orange. So that's going to create a nice dark. Get some dark tones. A little bit of alizarin crimson thrown in there to give it a bit more of a red glow. So I'm not using any black, obviously. I'm getting my darks by just mixing color together. All right, let's just feel what we want. Getting a general idea of what I'm after here. Yep. Alright, so we'll just keep on going with that sort of theory. Okay, so we'll just keep on, there's going to be plenty of dark, this is a very dark tone painting, so let's just get the paint on first and we'll work out what we're going to do after that. Play around with some lovely dark tones. Burnt Siennas, Ultramarine Blues. Ok, 
just keep on throwing the paint around, lock it all in, that's it. Lovely stuff, look at that, going on beautifully. It's a fantastic thing about a knife. You can get the paint on really quickly, so. Obviously with a brush you can put the paint on quickly too, but quite often it's thinned down with some sort of medium. I'm using straight paint here, which means I can apply the paint really quick, get plenty of body of paint in there, and then start getting into the finishing stages earlier. Now I might just go a little bit of white with that and a bit of red. Just trying to lighten the tone now, so I'm still using ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, maybe a bit of alizarin crimson but I've just lightened the tone with a little bit of white. What's that, bit of magenta? I throw a bit of magenta in. I just noticed I wanted a bit more of that color, so we'll go with that, let's have a look. All right, blue, lighten it, going more of a blue and magenta. So slight purple feeling. Let's have a look. Yeah, something like that, that's pretty good. So it's still a darkish tone, but it's more in line with uh, blues and magentas, so it's kind of a, a blue. And still, instead of being down the black end, you've got white here, you've got black there. I was painting somewhere before in this darker tone, now I've just gone up a few more, a little bit closer to white, but still, still way in the darker tones. I like to start off with dark first with an oil painting. Put your dark in and then uh, you can put the light on top. You can easily do the opposite and that's fine too but as a general rule if you're painting chunky and thick wet on wet in pasto it's just easier to apply, get the stuff on. It's easy to apply the light over the dark. Dark over light can be done but you find you may get into a mess a little bit easier. It still can be done and I do it, don't worry about that. But as a rule of preference, start off the other way around. Get your darks in first. And this is a very dark painting. <laughs> but there's going to be highlights too, as you can see. So Now one of the favourite things about me going out painting on location, painting plain air, on plain air, is I love being out there in amongst nature. And like we all do, I like to sit around a nice campfire. There's just something really satisfying to you, the primitive self. It's just, you're sitting around that fire and it's just like, this is, this is the bee's knees. This is the best stuff. So that's what this subject is going to be today. When I'm out plein air painting, sitting around the campfire is a major, a major part of it all. So, thought, well, if I'm at home here, I'm not out in the bush just yet. Don't worry, I'm going out in the bush very, very soon. Got a major trip planned, which is fantastic, cannot wait. But at the same time, if I'm still here in the studio, this can remind me of what happens when I'm out there. Yeah. Get a little bit more of a coverage on the edges, get it a little bit neater. That looks good on the wall, unframed, doesn't have to be framed. I know different countries have different thoughts on that maybe, but in Australia, a lot of people with the modern clean house and the clean walls just love to have a painting stretched on, a stretched canvas or a stretched linen on the stretchy bars, just straight on the wall. And it's also easier to choose when you're buying the painting because if you like that painting then there's nothing to distract from it. The painting is just the painting, there's no frame to say oh I like that painting but that frame is a bit yeah yeah whatever. So there's only one choice to be made if you like the painting then that's it as opposed to frame and painting two different things. All right so now we'll get some magenta Okay, 
going to put this one in a cartridge, so I've got magenta, beautiful colour. These cartridges are also great stuff. The only problem is with the cartridge, you can't put it back in when you're finished if you've got too much left over. So, But as far as convenience and plenty of paint and quick, it's very good stuff. Alright, we'll get some of that magenta then, with a bit of burnt sienna and a bit of white, and see what we got here. A bit more white, a bit more burnt sienna. Have a feel now. I want that to be there. Something along those lines. A bit more magenta, a bit more burnt sienna. Just feeling it as I go. Yeah. Let's go back to the darkest darks for a minute. Clean that up. Get some blue and brown without as much white in it. Right, lighten the tone again, back into the lighter tones. White, magenta, burnt sienna. More burnt sienna. Yeah, get that going now, look at that. Alright. Just working out in my mind, composing what I want to do. Just get this covered, eh? Stop mucking around. Magentas, burnt siennas, ultramarine blues. Get some coverage. There we go, there we go, nice. Right, so there'll be that there. Let me just compose this picture in my head. Is that there, I think I'll... As we speak, I just take that around like so, so I know in my head what I'm doing. Right, got that sussed. That's very good. Just a little bit of blending now. I'm just going to move it around with a lot of little marks to add, add interest. A lot of variety in the marks. So even though there's plenty of dark going on, there's plenty of, also plenty of stuff going on. Creates an interesting... Interesting painting when you've got a lot of subtle variances of colours and tones and forms. Warm and cool. I've got these cool out on the edge here, the blues. A few of these warmer tones flicking around. Like so. Vary the marks. Blend it all in, that's it. Alright. Now. Keep on heading in closer. So I might go a bit of yellow ochre and burn sienna now. So I've lightened the tone, I've got more white, and I've gone more for the yellow ochres and burnt siennas and less of those darker tone blues and whatever. So I'm getting more into the ochre colours as I get closer to the fire itself. But at the moment I'm not playing with any super strong high key oranges or yellows or anything yet. I'll save that for more of the highlights. It's always good to not get stuck into the highlights too much with colour and tone. Work in the lower, the lower range of colours. So you're working, if you've got black here and white there, don't use all your tricks right straight away. Use further down here, paint the picture with that. Then you've got a lot of room for accents at the end, the higher key colours. Like the yellows and oranges and whatever. 
Just get a general feeling going. Pull through, pull through. Magenta, white, so I'm using, now I'm using magenta and white and yellow ochre. Just trying to get some sort of general feel of a colour and tone that's lighter as I draw. Just draw a few things in like so. Feel it as you go, feel it as you go. Right. I'll just stand back and have a look what's going on. All right, that's good. Now, I'll just go for slightly smaller knives just for a little bit more control. Go for the really dark tones again. I just want to pick out Edge of this like so. Alright. Maybe pick out the edge of this little one. There we go, look at that. Look at that. Let's pull around. Okay. Clean up the edges a little. More of that magenta light tone again. Alright, yes. Clean this knife off nicely. That's the bonus about using a pellet knife as opposed to Using brushes is I can straight away get stuck into a new colour and tone without any mess because give it a wipe over, bang you there. Right, what are we doing here? Let's just get a dark tone and work out what's going on. It's gonna go that way, isn't it? It's gonna go that way and then it's gonna go that way. Alright. Okay, now I'm really enjoying that blue. I'm gonna stay with that blue color. I might just actually lighten it a little bit. So I've got some blue, light blue. And you might think, what are you doing? You could be right, but just wanna introduce a little bit more lightness to that blue, because that blue is the complementary color of what the flames are gonna be up here. So it's always good to go warm and cool contrast, as you know. Yep. yep, nice. Just throw them around with a bit of randomness. A little bit of darkness here. Just starting to slowly but surely, and when are we going to put this on? I'll go there. Slowly but surely build in. start to see things in the, in the, it's not just a few simple colours and tones, I'm actually starting to suggest forms and, and objects. Let's go a little bit darker up here again. Let's get that blended. Bit more white, lighter tone. That's it, white, blue. Just up here. Just gonna introduce maybe a few light tones that could be suggested. Maybe a bit of smoke from the fire, and I'm just doing little marks to help blend it. Very softly blending that, okay. Right. Now, stand back and have a look, see what's going on. All 
Right, that's all working now. A few dark tones will just suggest just a little bit of something going on here. A little bit of white, a bit of yellow ochre. Just get a little bit lighter tone now. Just get a bit whiter. More white in the mix. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. Blue, burnt sienna. Just going to knock up a bit more of a shadow colour again. There we go. All right, it's coming along. Let's just go a bit more of this yellow ochre and white while well, we've got that. Just drop on this edge here, just catching a bit of light. A little bit of light's getting caught there, like so. Knife on the edge. Yeah, things are starting to happen. Okay, well I'm starting to see something now. I'm starting to get a feel of the forms and shapes and generalisation of what I want. I've got the big impression of all the dark, the major tones are there. Now what I want to do is work, like I was saying before, I saved a few of the accents to get into the brighter stuff now. So I'll start going for more of the cad yellows and oranges, like really high key stuff that I've left. So that'll really start to pop now if I put that on. Let's have a look. You can see that that... Is really, really stinging it up now. I'll just keep putting some of that in. Just feel the flames licking up. Nothing like the beauty of campfire at night. We've all been there, we all know what it's like. It's fantastic stuff. Keep going with these highlights. Where are we? Just spring a few bits here and there. A bit more white. It's going to introduce a little bit more light here as the smoke chills off, like I was saying earlier. Just blend it in nicely with little marks. Send it on its way up this way. Here we go. Stuff. Right. I'll just stand back for a minute and have a look at that. That's all well good. Let's get on that real, we'll go real orange. You got a cat orange as well. Now really sting it with some bright, brighter stuff there. Just put a bit of that in. And then we'll smear it together. Get the yellow again. Pull that up through. There we go. Now smear it with a knife. Soften. Putting all that variety and light. Go now. Just generalizing brightness in the area as it slowly drops away as it gets further out. Just catching a few edges there. Branch just in here, something burning. Some shadows, light and shadow. That's what it's all about. Just 
Take a few shadows under the under the things that are burning themselves. Sit just a bit here, sit just a bit there. It's all good fun. It's just like I was saying earlier. It really reminds me of being out there when it's just night. Maybe the moon's out, maybe it's not. Either way, it's still great. And you've got It's that lovely sheen from the fire reflecting out and you look at the things around you and behind you, beside you and they've got the flickering light of the fire or they've got these beautiful pale shadows, blues and cool tones as the opposite, the opposite of the fire itself. Let's stick some more cool tone up in here to help contrast. Let's just stand back for a minute and see what I got. All right, so that's coming along. We'll just keep playing around with some of these colors and tones. out the light on the branches that are burning. A bit more of a light tone here. Just keep moving around, feeling it. Shadow there. All right, so now some of those highlights, we we'll just get a bit of white, a bit of cad. Some of those highlights are going to be a little more intense now. Like I said, I was saving it. So I can put stuff on now. It really starts to catch that light. Just put some about here. Okay. Now just pull some of this white back and see if I can get to the clean stuff. I've got a bit of blue mixed up in that white. We just want the pure white itself. Maybe a bit of cad, cad yellow. Knife on the edge. Just with a knife on the edge, we're just gonna Start feeling some of this shape of this. Well, it's actually a cup sitting here, so just put that there. It's the top of the billy catching a bit of light. Just lighten that tone a little bit in here. So, so it's just slowly building up of things now, just as much as you reckon you need to get a good effect. A few sticks lit up. A few things catching the light. All right, well, getting there, might just go a bit more of that smoky sort of. Just lighten that tone, just really introduce some smoke. Little marks, bearing away down, blending nicely. Just letting it drift off where it needs to go. You can really feel like everything's coming from the center and going outwards. Okay, 
what I've got. Let's just keep refining then. Get a bit more of these whites and yellows, more of the highlight colour. And add a bit of blue in that. We don't want that. This is for a highlight colour, so we're going for the more of the whites and got a knife on edge. Knife on edge, palette knife, very light tone. It's capturing the light licking and capturing the top level of that cup. Really making it sheen. Well, pretty happy with what's going on now. We've uh, got the big impression, got that beautiful feeling of the campfire at night. Got a few cups, the old Billy, fantastic stuff. Got a little bit of mystery off into the edges with the cooler tones, like I was saying, and there may be the suggestion of another cup or something out the top corner here. And uh, just a few little blobs here and there for highlights, the odd spark or something coming up. The odd spark, what are we going to do here? So one or two of those in. I'm really feeling the light now. Knife on the edge again, just pulling up a few of those highlights. All right, yeah, so pretty happy with what's going on now. Okay, now, like I was saying, it's all a celebration of just that romantic time of night when you're out there, plein air painting, having a cup once you're finished, set up for the night, getting ready for the next morning, the next painting. Just relaxing because you feel like you've done some great paintings through that day, hopefully. And just that time to be connect with nature, I guess. And a fire really does at night time, particularly if the moon's out, I've found, at night time a fire has a beautiful aspect about it because it has all those warm tones, the oranges and the yellows and the reds and whatever. Then when the moon's out, it seems to cast a cold light, a general cold light around the rest of the landscape. So when you get away from the fire, you tend to get those cooler blue shadows on the edges. And so it really helps because they're the opposite on the color wheel. Again, oranges here, blues down there, put them together. It really jumps in your eye. So that combination is fantastic for painting a vibrant and romantic painting. All right, well, I reckon we've, we're pretty much done now. I mean, I could keep on going, but I've gone for the big impression and I've got the big impression now. So I've got the lovely play of the warm and cool colours, using the fire as the keynote, obviously, with the light source and the really warm light tones. Complementary colours in the smoke drifting up, a blend of the warm and the cool smoke kind of drift smearing into one. A play of hard and soft. So down here, I've got more chunkiness, and I've got more chunkiness out there, like little chunk, chunk, chunk marks, but up here to give it a balance so you've got a nice contrast between hard and soft, lost and found, just a good rhythm through the painting in patterns with the mark making itself. I've softened this area a little bit more. So it's just a play, like you stand back and you analyze everything. It's a play, it's reality obviously, but at the same time, it's also an abstract pattern on a surface. So you get up close and it's all about paint and the way it's been applied. Stand back and hopefully it turns into a beautiful plain air evening once you finish those pictures and you're just kicking back with a nice cup of tea with Billy just chuffing off a little bit of steam 
just that romantic time of day and it makes you feel like you've really achieved something and you really feel like it's been a great, a great thing. All right, in saying that, I think it's pretty good. So what I might do now is I'll get that camera off and we'll have a buzz around and have a much closer look at the technique and see what you guys think. All right, let's do this. Thank you.